Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and I can't actually believe that I'm saying it. We're actually in the new season. The game has finally launched and hopefully, guys, you are just as hyped as me about it. Oh my god, I feel like we've been waiting for this for a long time, but at the same time, it has come very, very soon. We've still got a long way to go until the Premier League kicks off, but that doesn't mean we can't start tinkering with our team. So that's exactly what I've been doing today, making a nice little starter squad, a squad to set me up, a nice little template, just to my initial thoughts on what kind of players I think are going to be really good for the first few games of the season. So guys, that's what I'm sharing with you today. If you do enjoy what you see today, please do leave a like on the video. It really helps out the channel. And of course, if you're new around here, please do help me out by subscribing. We are so close to 60,000 subscribers. Come on, guys. You've got to help me out here. You've got to help me out. Come on, let's do it. And without further ado, I think we have a look at this team. So, back to 100 million for the budget. I'm actually only using 99.5 of the budget and keeping 0.5 in the bench uh, in the bank, which is kind of really useful, actually. I do recommend keeping 0.5 in the bank if you can, just because it's really useful in case there's any price changes during that first week of FPL. You have the ability to upgrade one of your players. So, say a player you really, really want goes up to 6.6 .6 million right and you want to trade out a player who's worth 6.5 million for the 6.6 .6 million player well you got 0.5 in the bank to sort yourself out and pay for that upgrade right guys so it's a really really nice little tactic you can use at the beginning of the season i tell people at every at the start of every season to go with this but guys let's just have a look at the team because we don't want to talk about prices and budgets all day we just want to look at some players okay let's start us off in goal with Sanchez. Sanchez is coming in at an incredible 4.5 million. So, so some really, really nice, 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 nice value there. And you know why I like Brighton players so much as well, particularly in defence? Well, one, their fixtures look incredible at the start of the season. They're playing kind of a couple of promoted teams during their first run of four fixtures. Uh, they play Burnley in the opening game. We know Burnley kind of often struggle for goals. And also, Brighton were one of the best defensive teams in last season. They really were. And people often don't really like to believe that, but they really were. Their, the underlying defensive numbers were incredible. They didn't actually concede that many goals at all. And they actually underperformed on a lot of those their stats, which is kind of suggests that hopefully they are going to improve this uh, that themselves this time around. We know that they're terrible for XG, XGC, XA, but hopefully they can catch up with those stats. And that's why I've gone for Sanchez as a goal as a really nice, cheap budget goalkeeper with good fixtures in a good defence. I think that's a really, really nice bit of value there. So moving on into defence, I'm going to start you off with Trent Alexander-Arnold. I'm going to start off with the most expensive players because maybe they're a little bit more obvious and then we'll move on to some of the maybe slightly less obvious players, I guess. I mean, if you look through this, this team, by the way, guys, all of the percentage ownership is going to be really high. All of these players are pretty high selected because... The only players who are playing Fantasy Premier League right now are the real experienced players in FPL. So they are naturally gravitating towards the same really nice picks. By the time we get to the kickoff of the first game of the season in, in five weeks time, however long it is, six weeks, we're going to see the percentage ownership for each of these players drop significantly as more casual players come into the game and start selecting uh, other players who aren't really as good picks. But these, good, these players are high ownership for a reason because the pool of players right now are pretty much exclusively experienced, very passionate FPL players, just like you guys, I guess. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll carry on anyway. We won't talk about percentage ownerships too much. You want to see players. You want to see players. So we've got Trent Alexander-Arnold. Obviously, he is just one of the best fullbacks in the game. That's why 7.5 million. He is a super, super creative, playing in a Liverpool side that takes on Norwich first. A really nice fixture to start the season off. I think Liverpool actually started off against Norwich last time Norwich were in the Premier League in the 2019-20 season. And I feel like that went pretty well for the, from an attacking point of view. Now, Alexander-Arnold, at the end of last season, he looks really, really good. Maybe he was disappointing in general uh, over, the, over the long course of the season, but certainly towards the end, he really, really stepped up. Up, playing plenty of crosses being one of the most creative players in the whole league and of course Liverpool's defence maybe a few Liverpool defenders coming back to fitness maybe a few defensive purchases during the summer for Liverpool hopefully they can shore a little bit up and uh, you know get a few more clean sheets which would be very nice which is what made them so valuable when uh, they were getting clean sheets and speaking of shoring things up here's our next pick it's Luke Shaw for Manchester United another team with a really nice run of fixtures at the beginning of this season now Leeds is not the perfect fixture to start off with but we're not building a team for one week here we're building a team for the slightly longer term so we are going to be uh, looking a little bit longer term with our with our uh, with our 
players and, and Manchester United arguably have the best opening run of fixtures of any team now you can make the judgment for yourself but Luke Shaw 5.5 million looks really good value he kind of nailed himself on last season where we kind of thought is he going to rotate with Alex Tellez no he absolutely beast it all season been one of the most creative players in the league from the left back position putting in plenty of crosses passes whatever whatever you like he's going to get some points Manchester United are going to keep some clean sheets and it's all going to be good and then moving on to some cheaper players, we're starting off with Wesley Fofana. And now this one, guys, I really like a lot. 4.5 million for a nailed-on Leicester defender. I mean, wow. 4.5 million, first of all, is just a really, really nice cheap price for some of your rotation defenders. But to get a Leicester player for 4.5 million, they're one of the starting defenders, one of the players of the season last, last year. He was incredible for Leicester. Now, fair enough. He's not really good for attacking returns, but to get a, a, a good opportunity for some clean sheets through that Leicester defence for that price, I think is really, really nice indeed. And he plays off Wolves first. Leicester have got a pretty good fixture as well, but, but it's just the... the the budget, it's just incredible budget option. And we are going to need to find those budget options at the beginning of the season because we're only working with a 100 million budget. So moving on to Tariq Lamptey, another 4.5 million defender. I do like to have a couple of 4.5 million defenders. And gosh, we are starting this season off with four at the back. Probably won't stay that way for long, but four at the back is a good way to get a, a decent amount of value from your team from, from the start, from the, from the off. Uh, and Tariq Lamptey, so we're doubling up on that Brighton defence. I've talked enough about Brighton defence, but what we know about Lamptey is that last season, when he was playing, when he was fit, he was incredible. We all really like the look of him. He looks so, um, looks so lively, you know, running up that right flank, getting really forward, getting really attacking. You know, getting assists. I think he, did he get a goal or two? I think at, at some point as well. I'm not sure if that was in the Premier League or, or in the cup fixtures, but yeah, he looked really good. So we've got a combination of a good Brighton defence, really nice attacking right back or right wing back or arguably right midfielder in Tariq Lamptey. He's he hopefully he can get back to what he was doing when he was playing last season because he looked really really good. And I think he might go under the radar a little bit because we haven't heard too much about Tariq Lamptey recently, but I still think he's a really good pick. So let's move on into midfield. We're going to start off with Mo Salah. In my opinion, the most obvious pick of anyone. Of anyone. Don't don't even think about not picking Salah. I really don't understand how anyone would not pick Salah when the opening game is against Norwich. Liverpool, you know, we're talking about Salah, a player who consistently is one of the highest scoring players in FPL every single year since he came into the Premier League. Um, other than that spell at Chelsea, obviously, but we won't talk about that. Um, but he looked really good all um, most of last season. He's on those penalties. He's like super aggressive. He's kind of greedy sometimes, which we like. Um, and he's just the star of the team. He really is. And uh, he, he's a uh, really... He's really putting Mane in his shadow, particularly over the last year. Not that it's not saying that I don't like Mane. I do really like Mane as well, particularly at the back end of last season. But I think you've just got to go for Salah and just 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 go for it. Don't even think about it. Uh, Bruno Fernandez next. And I, I, to be honest with you guys, the reason I've put Bruno Fernandez in my team is more out of fear than than me actually thinking I would love to have Bruno Fernandez in my team. Obviously, Manchester United have a fantastic run of fixtures, and that's going to mean a lot of people are going to go for Bruno Fernandez. So if Bruno Fernandez were to bang, do really well, then actually. I'm going to really suffer if I don't have him in my team. So that's why he's in there. It's kind of a little bit of a safety net against those Manchester United fixtures. Now, I didn't ha end the last season with Bruno Fernandes. And I think, generally speaking, that went pretty well. I feel like I, I covered it pretty well with, with uh, Greenwood, for example. A little bit for Rashford as well in certain game weeks as well. So I don't think Bruno Fernandes is essential. But... Everyone's going to have him. I don't want to be... If, if he bangs, he, get, you know, he wins a penalty or, or takes a penalty, should I say... I'm going to be in the mud a little bit, so I need to have him there just to cover me, I think. Um, but we'll see how he does. I, 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 I hope that he does okay just because he's in my team, but whatever. We'll move on to Greenwood, a player who I am a little bit more passionate about in the Manchester United team, who I just think is just absolutely fantastic. Now, if I'm perfectly honest, I'm not fully convinced on the Manchester United triple-up. Obviously, I, I really like their fixtures, their opening fixtures, but... Not 100% sure on the triple up. I have gone for it anyway because I do think Greenwood offers some good value, but this is going to massively depend on Manchester United's summer. Are they going to buy Jadon Sancho at right wing? We thought they would last year. It didn't happen last year at the end. Uh, Greenwood came good eventually. Uh, what's the situation with Cavani? Is he going to be a, a Euro European game player again? What's the situation with Martial? Are they going to be the, the forwards? Is Greenwood going to be given the shout as the forward? We're going to find a lot of stuff over the summer out. 
But for now, I do like the shout, but I do think this, this one is definitely subject to change. I can definitely see this one changing um, in a few weeks' time depending on the kind of news that I hear and maybe restructure my team a little bit. Not sure yet, guys. It's very early days. Uh, but we'll move on to Buendia. And this one, this one I, I do like. This one is one I'm much more confident in. Uh, Buendia is someone I do really quite like to, I quite like to have in my team. 6.5 million. So a, a pretty... It's arguably a budget price. I'd say that's probably a budget-ish price. It's not a mid-level price. It's not a expensive price. It's, it's a budget starting player kind of thing. So 6.5 million for Buendia. Just signed for Aston Villa. Uh, is he going to be replacing Grealish? If he is, fantastic. He's going to be the main creative force. If he's not, fantastic. He's still going to be one of the main creative forces. So Buendia creates so much. We saw it in the championship last season. We saw it in uh, the Premier League the season before when he played. He was creating so many chances, an unbelievable amount of chances. Just Norwich didn't quite have the quality in their, their, their team to finish off the chances that Buendia was supplying. Now, coming into this Aston Villa side, a team that is, uh, has a little bit more quality than Aston Villa, uh, than uh, Norwich, I can see uh, his numbers stepping up massively. I can really see that happening, and that's the reason he's gone in my team. Plus, opening game against Watford, some really nice fixtures. I do like the look of Aston Villa players at the beginning of the season as well, so he is in. Moving up front, we have got Dominic Calvert-Lewin, a bit of a legend of last season, actually, a, a real legend. You know, he was pretty much smashing it most of the season, and he had an incredible start as well, just scoring pretty much every game. I was thinking he goes something like a run of six games, six goals, a goal in every single game. Maybe he got a brace in one of those games as well. Crazy, absolutely crazy stuff. So hopefully he's going to have a really nice start to the season as well. He is, of course, the main source of goals in that Everton team. They've got a pretty nice start with a start of the season against Southampton. So that could be pretty nice. I just quite like him as as a striker. In terms of premium strikers, I don't think there's a lot of value around, to be honest. You've got to pick one. Who do you go for as your premium striker? Calvert Lewin is the one that stands out to me based on last season's performance, based on the way that Everton played, based on the fact that Everton are probably going to be investing a little bit more in their team. And Calvert Lewin is still going to be the main striker in that team as well. So, yeah, really looking forward to seeing him. And we're finishing off the starting 11 with Ollie Watkins, another Aston Villa player. I, I told you guys, I do like this, this look of the uh, the Aston Villa fixtures at the beginning of the season. And Watford is a great way to start as well. Ollie Watkins, assuming he has Wendia and Grealish supplying him now, then that is pretty good. I'm, I'm sure you guys will agree. That is, that's pretty nice, that is, isn't it? So that's definitely something that we'll, we'll look forward to seeing. And Ollie Watkins, of course, Pretty again, very consistent last season. Really, really nice pick th throughout the season. Never really lost his value. You know, he was just constantly a good player. And I know people had their doubts about him at certain points in the season. Maybe he was a little bit unlucky at times. Overall, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So that's why he's in the team. So guys, with the first eleven done, let's have a look and see what I've done on the bench. And let's see if you're interested in what I've done here. So we've started off with Foster. Uh, the cycling goalkeeper himself, a fellow YouTuber and a fellow fantasy YouTuber in a way. I know he does a bit of fantasy stuff sometimes on his YouTube channel. So how can I not represent him for a start? He's 4 million, so it's the cheapest a goalkeeper can possibly be. I'm personally not fan, not a fan of having two goalkeepers and rotating them. Not really for me. I know a lot of you guys will probably like having two 4.5 million goalkeepers or two... Well, one 5 million goalkeeper, one 4.5 million goalkeeper. But I personally like to spend as little as possible on those goalkeepers because, generally speaking, the cheaper goalkeepers are often the highest scoring goalkeepers for a start. You know, we saw with Martinez uh, last season, uh, Nick Pope the season before. You can get so much value for 4.5 from a goalkeeper, um, you know, compare them to like the 6 million goalkeepers, the 5.5 million goalkeepers, it's not going to be a huge amount of difference between the, their scores and the 4.5 million goalkeepers. So you may as well just spend it as little as possible. And on the bench, 4 million. No, no need to mess things about. You know, if you rotate goalkeepers, half the time you're going to get it wrong and your goalkeeper on the bench is going to outscore your goalkeeper on the pitch, whether it's because he saves a penalty, whether it's because he makes a lot of saves. You know, if he's in a tough game, you rest him because you think he's in a tough game. He ends up making loads of saves then you've got a load of points on your bench. And that's not what I want. I'd rather use the money in places that are and on players that are actually going to play. You know, you don't get any points for players on your bench, you know. So moving on to Tony. Uh, obviously, I, I'm, I'm, he got a lot of goals last season. <laughs> let's, let's, let's not mess this up. He, you know, a record-breaking amount of goals in the championship last season. But a lot of those goals were penalties. Now, 
I need to do the full research on this because, guys, remember, this is very much your first day, first hour of making a team. This is very, very initial thoughts for me. So I do need to do my research properly before I finalise anything. I've got a long time to do that, to be fair. But Tony got a lot of goals. He's 6.5 million. I don't like his opening fixture against Arsenal, but after that, the fixtures are okay. And he is very clearly the centrepiece of this Brentford side. So for that reason... He's in the team for now. 6.5 million. That's not a bad price for a striker, really. I'm not really sure anyone else is sticking out to me around that price too much. But I do think this can change. Maybe I'll restructure a little bit. Put a little bit more money in my strikers. Take a little bit of money out of my strikers. Maybe go for a five-man midfield. Something like that. But this is where I'm at right now. Tony on the bench. Ready to come in in the case of an emergency or in future game weeks. That's kind of what I'm thinking. We've got Bissouma, 4.5 million, the cheapest uh, midfielder can be. So a nice little budget pick on, on, the, uh, on the bench there, just to make sure I've got as much value on the pitch as possible. Um, so we've got Bissouma there against Burnley. It, you know, it's a good fixture. Like I said, Brighton have good fixtures in general, and Bissouma is capable of getting the odd goal. I don't think he's quite as defensive as a lot of people think he is as a player. So there is, out of the 4.5 million midfielders... He probably he is probably the best one objectively speaking right now from this point of view i don't know what transfers are going to be made or whatever things change but right now i like basuma as the 4.5 million option and then finally a 4 million defender not really much to be honest in terms of 4 million defenders so far that i've seen maybe some players will emerge as some good options but right now not really liking any of them so i kind of have been forced in a way to go for kelly at at uh, at uh, crystal palace martin kelly just because he has been playing when he's fit. He's had a few injury problems last season. Is he going to come back into the team this season? Maybe. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I should speak to some Crystal Palace fans about that. But I do remember Kelly being a, a starting player whenever fit. Um, so maybe he comes back into the team and uh, therefore he at least can get you a couple of points in an absolute emergency. At the end of the day, a falling million defender is mostly likely going to be the last player on your bench every time so do you really want to be spending that much money on the final play on the team just find the best four million option in defense and as far as i'm concerned kelly is the best one i've seen so far i'm probably totally wrong about that i need to do my research guys like i said but for now kelly will will do he'll you know fill that spot he'll fill the gap if you like um but there you go guys i'm going to tell you captains quickly i know it's very early but captains is so obvious to me right now Salah, you've just got to captain Salah on game week one. I, there's pretty much nothing that can change my mind on that, barring a Salah injury or something like that. There's pretty much nothing that could change my mind. Salah has just got to be a captain. If Salah's not your captain and he does well, you're going to find yourself at a real disadvantage going into game week two. So, uh, got to be considered. And we'll put vice captain on Bruno Fernandes, another premium player. Why the devil not? Trent Alexander-Arnold, obviously another good shout for captains. Uh, if you're feeling rather spicy, but I, I don't think I don't think you mess about in in game week one. Just try and play the template a little bit. Try and be a little bit sensible, and then build from there. And uh, the best place to start for me is with a Salah captaincy. Um, I think that's right. So there you go, guys. Let me uh, let me hear about your thoughts on this team. Please do tell me what you think about this. Are there any players you think must go in every team? Are there any players you look in, in this team and think, why on earth? Why on earth has Dan put that player in, in that team? That is ridiculous. But uh, there you go, guys. Anyway, that is my team, and looking forward to hearing a little bit about your thoughts about it as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching this first Fantasy Premier League video for the new season. If you are watching my Euro content uh, as well, don't worry, the Euro content is not stopping at all. I know a lot of you guys are really hyped about the Euro Fantasy content and, and so am I. I cannot wait, by the way guys, to share where my current rank is. You guys who follow me on Twitter will know what my rank is right now in Euro Fantasy. It's it's pretty good we'll put it that way um so i'll be sharing my scores and stuff and sharing my thoughts on all all things euro fantasy very soon so that's not going away but guys before you leave please do leave a like on the video it really helps out the channel if you're new around here please do subscribe as well as we aim for 60,000 subscribers we've got to do that within the next couple of days guys it's got to be done it really has and um, aside from that thank you so much for watching and i will see you later mates bye bye